Hey guys, you're watching Reader Recap. The story begins inside the Grand Hall of Taixuan Holy Land, each in an inner disciple of his sect, arguing with his elders, angered because they are betrothing Miss Sue, the Holy Maiden, to someone whom she has never even met before. Many people stood inside and listened to the angry roars of the young disciple. The people inside the Grand Hall are displeased with his action and wondering if each inn has gone crazy and how does he have the audacity to say such things in the Grand Hall. The Taixian Archbishop spoke up to Ichin saying that he remembers him. Only after years of struggle were Ichin able to enter the Taixian sacred land and asks why now he is telling him that he wants to give up his title as an inner disciple. The Archbishop releases a powerful aura to suppress each inn's being and cold sweat drip down his forehead. Ichin answers that he was merely feeling a sense of injustice for the Saintess, and he can't just watch as she helplessly gets thrown into the fiery pits of hell. While this happened, Master Gu is sipping his tea and couldn't be bothered by the drama because he just got transgressed to this world and fused into a body of a villain, infusing their memories. Just like in the usual comics, he'd be the type of villain who's just a stepping stone for the protagonist and gets constantly face-slapped and humiliated by them. The only difference between him and the other is that he has a mysterious game-like system. According to the system, the fortune levels are divided from low to high. Start at red, orange, yellow, green, cayenne, blue, and purple. An ordinary person is only at the red fortune value, and the young man Ye Chen's fortune value is green, and he is revealed to be the fortune's chosen, a main character of this world. And while Guchanga's fortune is black, a constant reminder of him that he is a villain and won't live that long, Ye Chen tries to provoke Gu Chang and shouts at him, but that didn't go as he planned. Ye Chun sensed the situation had developed against him because of his actions the people around him turned against him and he thinks to himself, why are they siding with Master Gu? But he didn't know that his status is not anywhere near that of his opponent. Even the Holy Maiden is not speaking up for him, even though they have a close relationship with each other. Seeing the fortunes chosen being humiliated satisfies Master Gu. Ye Chun tries for the second time to provoke Master Gu by yelling something useless. The archbishop was about getting irritated if he sent actions before he could say anything. The sacred prince took the initiative and stepped up to take Ye Chun down to make amends to Gu Changa. And the prince challenged Ye Chun in which Ye Chun gladly accept, while the bystanders are stating that Ye Chun is naive and was biting off more than he could chew because the sacred the prince is stronger than Ye Chun in regards to their cultivation. Meanwhile, Master Gu is thinking to himself that if Ye Chun can't even win a simple cross-realm battle, he wouldn't be worthy of the title fortunes chosen. And at once their fists clash, but the sacred prince was knocked back in revealing the Ye Chen to be stronger. As Ye Chen stood surrounding himself with a fiery aura and a confidence in his eyes and mocked the sacred prince's skill, countless female disciples were flabbergasted and many were stupefied. And the disciples and elders present were dumbfounded, and even the dull-looking archbishop was petrified as it was completely out of their prediction. But of course, Master Gu was unaffected by the surprise. After all, Master Gu is well-versed with a story like this because he came from another world and knows that Ye Chen was the protagonist of this world. His ability to humiliate and face-slap is at the highest level. Looking directly at the woman besides him with a yellow fortune value of 350 should be named Su Chinga, the female lead of this world. Master Gu had a grin on his face because of what he's about to do next. Slowly, he took a sip of a tea, and in a relaxed manner, he asked the Holy Maiden if she was always been this confident in Ye Chen, and if the Holy Maiden's reason that she tries so hard to remain calm to let him think that there's nothing between her and Ye Chen out of fear that he might kill Ye Chen. Master Gu lets out a small praise, saying that she's a wise woman. As he saw through her effortlessly, Master Gu took a glimpse at his teacup and faintly blurted that it's empty. In response, Miss Sue glanced at him before quietly picking up the teapot to refill his cup. The woman's hand that was holding the teapot shook lightly. Then Master Gu holds Miss Sue's hand to calm her, and asks to not be afraid of him because he's neither a wolf nor a tiger. Master Gu lifted her arms near his lips and say to Miss Sue that the tea is hot, so she should leave this to the servant. It'd be a pity if she injured her hand. After this assistant interface popped up notifying Master Gu, that Miss Su has had a subtle change of heart and protagonist Ye Chen's fortune value deducted by 10, Master Gu was stunned and surprised he can do that. Master Gu then grins menacingly, as it seems that things have started to become interesting. As this happened, Ye Chen saw all of it, and cursing at Master Gu, shouting how dare he touch Miss Su. 
the Sacred Prince reminds Ye Chen that they're not finished fighting. Ye Chen warns the Sacred Prince if he really think that he wouldn't dare kill him just because he's the Sacred Prince. While Master Guz is in thought, being well versed with all the possible scenario, he knows Ye Chen can defeat the Sacred Prince and take this opportunity to challenge him to make a bet or something. With his cultivation talent, after a few years he might come back to find him the Avenge Today shame, so Master Gu refused to leave his life in the hands of some shitty script. Nonetheless, at that moment, Master Gu cuts in and says how boring it is. Just by a couple words, Ye Chen was left stunned as if he was out of his mind. Master Gu says that since the matter pertains to him, he shan't bother Sacred Prince with it. Ye Chen asks loudly if Master Gu's putting on airs and screaming he's not afraid of him. Master Gu lightly asks if Ye Chen's fearlessness comes from ignorance as he unleashes his glare. The next moment, a spine-chilling suppressive aura so overwhelming that it could shred the sky and fissure the lands ferociously gushed in the palace. Ye Chen tried to endure it and tried to mock Master Gu again. Master Gu takes it as a challenge, so he enhanced his attacks out nowhere the wind, violently swirled in the palace while runes lit up as spiritual energy surged everywhere. Everyone watching was intuitively horrified by the event, and that included many elders who were dazed and quivering. As the receiver of the attack, Ye Chen was clearly affected, followed by the blanching of his face. Immediately, his legs grew weary, and his entire body collapsed to the ground before his head struck the floor as he struggled. He was thoroughly vanquished. Master Gu then asked Ye Chen if that's how he wants him to respond to his words. Even the Archbishop thinks to himself that Master Gu is already so strong at such a young age and that they really can't afford to offend him. As Ye Chen raised his head, only to meet the condescending eyes of Master Gu, with his own filled with disbelief and reluctance. While this happened, a system interface appeared in front of him again. States by defeating the fortunes chosen in public, Ye Chen will lose 10 point, and his fate value will be increased by 50 since the fate value can increase the skill level points, the cultivation level will increase as well. At that moment, Master Gu called out in his heart, allowing himself to view the system interface. Master Gu asked the system, what happens if he kills off Ye Chen right now? The system answered the user is advised against doing so due to current luck value or negative luck value may occur. The system clarifies that he has sufficient strength to kill Ye Chen, but it will result in more misfortune and triggering a series of unknown variables because he is the biggest variable yet. It seems he'll have to take time to kill the fortune's chosen one while gradually diminishing his fortuity to the lowest. With the simplest analogy, if Master Gu were to kill Ye Chen off right now, a lightning bolt would instantly be cast from the skies upon him, and also those having close relationship with the fortune's chosen are the same. This means trying to affect Ye Chen by forcing Miss Su won't work. The Archbishop laugh and praises Master Gu for having such a strong cultivation base at such a young age. Other elders followed and praised him as well. The Sacred Prince also apologized for his lack of skill and insults Ye Chen. Hearing all this, it strikes a nerve on Ye Chen, so he launched a surprise attack on Master Gu, was blocked effortlessly by Master Gu, and threw Ye Chen to a pillar. Instantly defeating him leaves Miss Su by surprise. This action leaves a bad reputation around Ye Chen. Not only he completely ignored the sect rules. He also tries a surprise attack and also disrespected their distinguished guest over and over again. And so the elders decided to block Ye Chen's cultivation base and was sent to a prison to wait for his execution. Then Master Gu goes to Miss Su and asked if she would be so kind as to bless him with her beauty to witness the beautiful moon tonight. Meanwhile, the archbishop was ecstatic of what he heard and praised Master Gu having this much risk. The Archbishop used his telepathy to communicate to his daughter, and remind his daughter their fortune lies on Master Gu, and advises her not to be confused. Miss Su, answering with a resounding all right. In that instant, Ye Chen's body froze as his eyes grew icier. This caused Ye Chen's heart to be damaged. Ye Chen, overwhelmed by the immense humiliation, spewed blood before passing out. With that, the system popped a notification, and his luck points was reduced by 100, while Master Gu receives 500 fate values. Master Gu was surprised and realized how this system works, and this fortune's chosen one is nothing but a crop for his system. And although this process is a little troublesome for Master Gu, it will slowly drag the fortune's chosen to death, and it's quite fun for him. On a later time, an elderly man in black with a concealed face standing at the top of a roof eavesdropping on the Holy Maiden and Archbishop conversing about their current situation. In a change of scene late at night, in the chamber where Master Gu rested, 
the elderly man in black with a concealed face appeared out of thin air. Master Gu, sitting upright on his bed, asks, How's the investigation advancing? Ming Lao, the elderly man in black, answers that it is indeed as Master Gu anticipated. There was a reason why the Archbishop decided to send his daughter away. That the Holy Land's mightiest warrior had died 300 years ago, but the information was never disclosed to the outside world. As such, Supreme Taishan's sacred land is in urgent need of new support. Furthermore, the Archbishop's wife, a noblewoman from the Upper Realm, was captured back to the Upper Realm. Thus, the Archbishop wishes to use the Holy Maiden Miss Sue to strike up a relationship with Master Gu in order to search for his wife's whereabouts. Master Gu grinned as his guess was correct yet again. He was contemplating that Miss Sue, as the female protagonist, must have a complex background, which was why he got the elderly man in black to dig up information about her. Master Master Gu received the information he commands Ming Lao to take a look at Ye Chen, who is being locked up in the underground jail. Ming Lao asked his young master why he seemed to have taken interest in Ye Chen. Master Gu serenely answers that Ye Chen possesses a great deal of luck, which he can meet his destiny with. Ming Lao nodded his head in realization and responded that he understood before slowly fading into the winds. Shortly after, he summoned his system and a virtual interface appeared before him, the system congratulating him on completing the first face slapping of the day, and he have successfully passed the beginner phase. Master Gu has obtained a beginner's gift. He decided to retrieve the beginner's gift, gaining domain one breaking talisman, one five-colored rope, one-third of a broken world seed. Although he was carrying misfortune with him, it seemed to have no effect on the system. Furthermore, the three gifts he obtained seemed to be pretty useful as well. Firstly, the Domain Breaking Talisman. As its name suggested, it could tear down the barrier between two domains, allowing the user to travel between them. Secondly, the five-colored rope was a defensive magic tool. Upon reading its introduction, Master Gu found it to be extremely handy as it could deflect one fully charged attack from an assaulter of partial enlightened realm. And the last item Master Gu's eyes glistened with amazement, looking at the broken world seed. After a complete world seed has been refined, it can be used to nurture a part of the world in one's body, creating endless good luck and creating one's own life and death. And Master Gu thinks if he collects all the world seed, surely no one between heaven and earth can kill him. Then Master Gu commands the system to use fate value to enhance his power level. Master Gu's thoughts were rather simple as he had a tremendous sum of 550 fate values at his disposal, and he eventually broke through to level 7 of Skyward Ascension. A blaring thunder gushed into the palace, along with an intimidating aura that filled every space as dead silence surrounded the palace. Meanwhile, a couple of guards on patrol were thoroughly spooked. Even the archbishop reacted to it, and even the holy maiden was shocked as she looks up the sky, and at that moment we can see her other souls is conversing to her and says to her that Master Gu is more interesting than Ye Chen, and that she and Miss Su both know this. Holy Maiden scoffed and told her second soul to shut up. We are brought back to Master Gu, founds himself no longer grinning, although breakthrough was a good thing. The downside was that to achieve that, 550 fate value were exhausted in the blink of an eye, but also there's still the existence of the system anyways, and he'll still have fate values in the future and laugh while making fun of Ye Chen comparing him to a crop awaiting to be harvested, and hopes Ye Chen can donate more fate values. If Ye Chen gets cut clean by him too early, that'll only mean Ye Chen's death date is here. In a change of scene, in the murky prison of Tai Shan Sacred Land, where damp atmosphere and nauseating odor from rotting corpses wafted, Ye Chen was sitting still, his eyes were unspirited, and there was even sorrow underneath them. His powers were sealed and he was constricted with handcuffs. Even until now, he had yet to recover from the immense shame in his entire life. Except for the disgrace his former fiancée caused him three years ago, he had never been hammered with such harsh humiliation. Whatever hardship it was, he had always gotten himself through it, turning adversaries into serenity. Nevertheless, the situation changed. As he felt powerless, he punched a wall, cursing at Master Gu. A sweet voice then calls to him from the ring that he is wearing. Later, a figure of a beautiful and well-developed woman appeared from the ring. As Ye Chen was dazed, anger and disdain surged in his face. Asks Ye Chen on where was she, and why didn't she come out and help him with a trace of bitterness in her face? Ye Chen responded earlier. There was an overbearing being whose aura enclosed the palace. 
and she suspect the being is related to the evil force involved to her downfall, so she didn't dare to show herself. She then asks Ye Chen not be reckless, but that wasn't what Ye Chen wanted to hear, and shouts angrily at Ye Chen, asking her if she wanted him to give up on Miss Su too. Then Ye Chen warns Ye Chen that Master Gu has powerful guardians lurking behind him, and they can't fight him head on. Ye Chen disregarded Ye Chen's warning and blamed his luck on why he lost. Ye Chen is seeing Ye Chen be so agitated, she revealed a frown as she sighed in her heart. In her eyes, Ye Chen's mind had yet to mature, given how he was willing to defy someone he shouldn't have for the sake of a woman. As they were conversating, Ye Chen thought of an idea. His master was dumbfounded. Ye Chen suddenly explains and asks his master to spread the news that the Supreme Elder Su was dead 300 years ago, so that the other sects could seize the Taishan sacred land as a group, and so he could run away in the midst of the chaos. His master reminded him that the Taishan Holy Land may be destroyed, and in any case, they have been looking after him for many years. But Ye Chen just shouted her that he doesn't care, saying they were the ones being unkind to him first, and he simply wants them to understand the consequences of offending him. As they were discreetly conversating, it revealed that Ming Lao was spying on them. Although Ye Chen was once a mighty figure in the past, she was now only a cursed spirit, so she wouldn't be able to sense him, and we are brought to a scene outside Master Gu room where the disciples are fixing it, where his room Master Gu can be seen with Miss Su, and they are having a conversation about the upper realm. Then Master Gu asks Miss Su if she wants to go there and see for herself. Miss Su answers that Master Gu must be joking, without the strength of a quasi-god. The barrier can't be broken. Nowadays, how could anybody be able to reach the upper realms? Because even the most powerful cultivators of all the sacred lands in the eastern wilderness are only in the pseudo-sacred emperor realm. Then Master Gu asks if being at the quasi-god realm really that powerful to her, and says that once she's in the upper realms, she'll realize just how insignificant the quasi-god realm is. Thanks for watching.